What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about Jeepers Creepers in this video here today. So this will be more of the continuation of Alistair's proposed Jeepers Creepers 5, a true sequel to Jeepers Creepers 2 that picks up 23 years later. It's centered on this, the child of Minxy and Jack Taggart Jr. named Billy, named after the brother Jack Taggart Jr. lost at the start of Jeepers Creepers 2. We're going to be picking up where we left off in the last video. I'm probably going to do a playlist dedicated to this story from Alistair. So that way everybody can watch it in order. But if you recall at the last video or in the last video, I talked about Bucky getting a phone call from a mysterious woman warning him about the dangers on the train. So now we're going to pick up from where I left off in that last video. So elsewhere in Poho, a woman driving down a highway stops at an isolated gas station. It is eerily quiet. There is no sign of anyone. She finds the station is locked up and in darkness. She tries to contact someone on her smartphone, but can't get a signal. Chilling howls of animals are heard from nearby. Frightened, she tries to get back in her car, but none of the doors will open, even though she left them unlocked. She sees something moving behind the gas pumps and lets out a blood-curdling scream. A police car approaches the station and pulls over. Two Poho officers step out and investigate. They find the woman's smartphone on the ground. They realize this is another abduction case. The sixth one in the past hour. One of the officers sees a sign at the shop window saying the station is closed until the end of the month. He does the simple math and says the station is closed for 23 days. Everyone on the train has now moved to the front carriage with most of them terrified. Erica is comforting Julie, the distraught wife of Peter, the passenger who vanished. Louis, the train conductor, suggests that they all get off the train and travel on foot down the railway line, saying it will lead them directly into Poho. He estimates it's only a four mile journey. Erica reminds them about the farm that she believes is less than a mile to the east. But Billy points out that's the direction of where Peter said he saw something in the field. The passengers agree to walk down the track. Billy offers to stay behind on the train in case help comes. Confused, Erica asks him why he would want to be left on his own after what just happened. Billy says because he's not afraid. The conductor uses an emergency hammer to smash a carriage window. While Billy isn't looking, Erica picks his backpack off the floor and sneaks off with it into the next carriage. She looks inside and finds a small plastic bag containing some kind of blade. She takes the weapon out of the bag and looks at it in her hand. It's, it's one of the Creeper's hunting knives, the same one used to pin Scotty to a tree in Jeepers Creepers 2. In a split second, the knife shoots out of her hand and hits the wall. Louis is now outside. He looks underneath the train with his flashlight and several crows shoot out past him. Much to his shock, the crows fly off into the sky and it soon goes quiet again. He tells the passengers to start climbing out the window one at a time. A man can be heard calling for help from nearby. Louis shines his flashlight at the field but can't see anyone. The unseen man continues to plead for help. Julie says that's her husband's voice. Billy enters the middle carriage and is shocked to see Erica has found the knife. Louis, armed with a gun, searches for Peter in the field and soon finds him crouching down beside some barbed wire. Peter stands up and lifts his head to look at Louis in an unusual manner as if he's been controlled. Speaking with a deep voice, he states, you will listen to me. Only one of you holds my interest. One of you has knowledge that can that can serve me. This one shall come to me or I will take all of you. Peter's neck breaks and his body falls to the ground. A shocked Louis gasps and falls over, or an almost falls over. He hears something in the air. He shines his flashlight up at a tree, but there's no sign of anything. Billy is furious with Erica for looking in his bag, but she demands to know what sort of knife this is. She says he knows something that he's not telling her. Billy reluctantly says, my father gave it to me after my mother died. He told me I might need it one day. Billy reveals he knows exactly what is going on and what is responsible for the disappearance of Peter and the train driver. Erica says he needs to tell everyone what he knows, not just her. Louis climbs back on the train and tells Julie her husband is dead. He says Peter spoke to him, but it was not him. It was like it was someone else speaking. Louis tells everyone what Peter had said. Julie starts crying. Billy says it was a message. He asks if any of them have heard the story of East Nine. One of the passengers says that was an incident that happened on a highway in Kensal County. Numerous people vanished without a trace. The story goes a creature of some kind with some huge wings stalked and killed those missing people and a crazy farmer hunted it down and killed it for revenge. Another passenger says that was all made up. 
Billy reveals it wasn't made up, it really happened. That crazy farmer was his grandfather. Billy says the creature that killed those people on East Nine Highway was the same thing that killed his uncle. The same thing that killed Derry Jenner. Everyone is shocked by this as they all know the story of Derry Jenner. Erica says Derry was the college student who found the victims of the Pertwilla killer in the basement of an abandoned church. She says it's common knowledge that the killer murdered Derry on a highway in Poho, but his sister was a survivor. Another passenger says the police pursued the killer and shot him on the same night Derry was killed. Billy says there was no serial killer, at least not in the formal sense. He reveals there was a major cover-up by the Poho police to hide the truth. The official story is that a deranged man drove around in an old brown truck and kidnapped and killed people, but the Polo police knew the killer was not just a man and they did not kill it. Billy believes he is the one who the creeper wants and says he will face it alone. He is prepared to go out there if it means keeping everyone else on the train safe. Louis offers Billy his gun, saying it might come in handy. Billy tells him to keep it. He climbs out of the train and goes into the field waiting for the creeper to take him. A crow appears on a fence, making a loud call. Billy hears the sound of a galloping horse. He looks around, but there's nothing. The hooves stop and the crow is gone. Sensing something isn't right, Billy heads back to the train and climbs back on board. Suddenly, the, the train begins moving forward. He, Erica, and Louie run to the driver compartment, but there's no one there. The train comes to a stop in the middle carriage where everyone else is, separate from the front carriage and begins moving in the opposite direction. Billy, Erica, and Louie run to the end of the carriage they are in and can only watch as the rest of the train moves away and disappears into the darkness, leaving behind only the fading screams of the other passengers. Something lands on the roof above them. They hear the sounds of footsteps. Louie is violently thrown down the hallway and hits a wall. The lights begin to turn off and on. Erica is lifted up in the air, unable to move or speak. The creeper emerges from the shadowy compartment and smiles. Billy looks at Erica and realizes she is the one the creeper wants. Billy walks towards it and reveals the knife. Billy stares intently at the creeper for a moment and throws the knife as hard as he can at it. The creeper jumps back into the shadows and vanishes as the, as the knife impales him. The entire carriage begins to shake. Erica is released from the creeper's supernatural grip. Billy recovers the gun that Louis offered him and uses it to shoot a window open he and erica both jump outside and start running through the field where they meet bucky billy knowing who bucky is tells him the creeper has returned bucky says he knows the train carriage explodes bucky leads the pair to his police car on a stretch of a road where they drive away Bucky tells them about the anonymous phone call he received at the residence of a missing man named Jules who has connections with Jack Taggart Sr. Billy says Jules is a friend of the family and a member of a team of men who swore to help Jack defeat the creeper on the evening it would supposedly awake, which is two days from now. Bucky says it has awakened earlier than they thought. Billy says they need to drive to his grandfather's farm. And that is how this chapter of my story for Alistair's reports will conclude this is amazing alistair this is honestly just quite fantastic look at how this man has explained how poho has treated the events from 23 years ago covering it up putting out false false realities to the public to manipulate them into thinking it's something that they want to believe because of course you can't just say hey some demonic thing took this boy look at all the cover-ups look at the way he's weaving in the legacy the legacy cast with these new characters Look at how everything is very suspenseful, tension-based, and you don't have a lot of the creeper being showcased. You're treating it the way it should be. It's been 23 years. We're not seeing a lot of him. He's being kept in the shadows. You're building up to it. And yeah, we're seeing some more of him towards the end of what I just talked about in this video. But you're doing a fine job with this story, Alistair. This is amazing. Look at how everybody is familiar with Derry. Look at how everybody is familiar with a lot of this stuff that happened 23 years ago. All of this stuff is being integrated into the story so phenomenally. And anybody that's a talented writer that wants to do an appropriate sequel should be able to do no different if you're out there in Hollywood and you actually have real talent. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.